another amen. amen god bless everyone tonight in jesus name amen. and i pray that the word of god will be of great tremendous benefit to everyone 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 here should understand you came here for development whatever section of the work you are in and so you need to have total complete concentration uh, let me say this for your benefit nobody shall be there in the congregation or outside anywhere in any of our meetings trying to control trying to control the meeting trying to control the minister trying to control the message we are here to learn and learners shall be submissive to the teaching of the word of god is that right always right father we thank you for this day and thank you for bringing us as servants of the lord as pastors as teachers of the word and we pray that your word will sink into every heart will be receptive before we can go and benefit other people grant us the grace and grant us the strength and the newness of life that we will listen to your word as real disciples and learners committed consecrated totally unto you in jesus name teach us tonight reveal yourself to everyone and your revelation will turn every life every ministry around for the better in jesus name thank you lord in jesus name we pray god bless you we're coming back to deuteronomy chapter 18 and we're reading from verse 15 here is the word that god the father proclaimed from heaven and he proclaimed it to the children of Israel and then for the other people, the rest of us that followed in every generation. Because he says, I am God, I change not. And he spoke about the coming prophet, talking about Christ, about Jesus, who also is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He tells us, return chapter 18, verse 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee it says of thy brethren like unto me and then he said unto him ye shall hearken uh, he says unto him ye shall hearken look at verse 18 in verse 18 it tells us it says i will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and it says i will put my words in his mouth i will put my words in his mouth and then it tells us what then will follow and he shall speak unto them all that i shall command him in verse 19 it tells us and it shall come to pass that whosoever whosoever pharisees sadducees herodians israelites gentiles whosoever will not hearken will not listen, will not hear, will not observe, will not obey, will not submit unto my words which he shall speak in my name. I will require it of him. We're talking about Christ, Christ the prophet, Christ the prince, Christ the priest, the high priest. The topic tonight is Christ the royal prophet. Is royal, is kingly because he is king, king of kings and lord of lords. Christ, the royal prophet with everlasting priesthood. Christ, 
the royal prophet with everlasting priesthood. We're dividing the message of three parts. Number one is the revealed prophet. It was revealed by the prophet. God told uh, as a prophet, he got told Moses and he said, a prophet like unto you, I will raise up unto the children of Israel, the revealed prophet with the father's full message. I will put my word in his mouth. And the father has given Christ the full message. No other message after him. Anyone who adds to this, I will add the plagues unto him. Anyone who takes away, I will take his name out of the book of life, which I have written. He has got the full message. No subtraction, no addition. Number two, number two, he is the reigning prince with the foremost and the final majesty. The foremost and the final majesty is king and he reigns today he reigns in our hearts and today he reigns in every believer's family today he reigns in every church that belongs to him upon this rock i build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it it is his church and he wants to rule he wants to reign in his church he doesn't want satan to reign in his church he doesn't want society opinions he doesn't want unbelievers backsliders to reign in his church he wants to reign and we give him the chance we give him the liberty that he and he alone will reign in his church the reigning prince with the foremost and the final majesty. Number three, number three is the redeeming priest as the faithful final mediator. His prophet, his prince, his priest, the high priest. Let's come to number one. Number one is the revealed prophet with the father's full message. He tells us in uh, that uh, Deuteronomy again, reading from chapter 18 and verse 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. He was born among the Jews. He was sent first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. And then it says, and among thy brethren, like unto like unto thee, it says, is it will be like unto unto Moses, and then ye shall hearken unto him. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, I will raise them up, a prophet capital P there because it's referring to someone who is beyond the human, who is beyond the natural. This is the Christ and he says a prophet and it will be from among their brethren. He says like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth. The words he speaks will not be his word. It will be the word that the Father has put in his mouth for all creation, for all his creatures, for both Jews and Gentiles. He says, I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Verse 19, verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken, will not listen, will not obey, unto, will not hearken unto, unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. I will require each of him. Christ is that prophet. How do we know? We're told in Acts chapter 3. Reading from verse 22, Acts chapter 3, verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you 
of your brethren like unto me him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say and uh, as, uh, P as uh, Peter repeated that prophecy, he tells us in verse 23, in verse 23, and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. When the prophet comes, he will speak the word of God. He will say, repent ye and believe the gospel. And every soul that shall not hear that prophet Christ, when he says repent and refuse to repent, they'll be destroyed from among the people. That prophet will come, he will say, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he will not enter into the kingdom. And every soul, anywhere, any part of the world, any soul that will not listen to that prophet of Christ and will not be born again, as I don't know anything about being born again, he says that person will be destroyed from among the people. He will tell them that they shall be sanctified because it is the truth, the truth he brought that will sanctify, that will purify because he will emphasize, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And every soul that shall not please to that, that will go on with religion without righteousness, that will go on with a tradition without holiness of heart, holiness of life, that person shall be destroyed from among the people. He's going to tell them, with thou in Jerusalem, until ye be endured with power from on high. For ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost uh, comes upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, it both in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the utmost part of the earth. He wants us to live to the word that Christ has spoken. Actually, Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So it says, and it shall come to pass, that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, Unto you first God have been raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you. Jesus now, uh, the, the apostle identified who that prophet is. He says, it's Jesus, the prophet, the one that was revealed to Moses. He said, he is Jesus and God raised him up from the dead and he has sent his son Jesus to bless you in turning every soul, every one of you from his iniquities. That's what he came to do. And that's what the father had given him to do. He is the prophet that has the fullness of the message of heaven that he has given unto us. In Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners speak unto the stipic in time past unto the fathers by the prophets unto the fathers unto the you know people of the jews of the people of israel he spoke unto them by the prophets he sent moses to them and moses was a prophet a prophet like unto thee he sent elijah elisha he sent david he sent all those prophets isaiah jeremiah ezekiel he sent to seer until malachi and he sent those prophets unto them he spoke unto the prophet unto the fathers by the prophets look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says as in these last Days spoken unto us by his son. The, the prophets are not the ones speaking now by 
his son. The prophet that he said, he will send. And he will send those prophets and he will put his word in the mouth of those prophets. And everything he says will be the word of the Father. He says, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. By whom also he made the worlds. He's talking about Jesus Christ. That's why he says everything Jesus said, everything Jesus taught, everything Jesus proclaimed, they're so very important. We cannot overlook them. We cannot neglect them. We cannot disobey them. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. Why? Because the things we have heard on repentance came from Christ. The things we heard about conversion came from Christ. The things we heard about righteousness, except your righteousness shall exceed the outward righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He spoke about making right our ways. He spoke about restitution. And we need to give them more and a seed to the things we have heard. Lest we should let them sleep, it says, it says, uh, lest the more honesty to the things we have heard, lest at any time, at any time, the time of forgetfulness, when you forget yourself, when you forget yourself that you are to hear. You are to believe, you are to endeavor to understand, and you are to endeavor to obey and to do what he has said. That you come to the house of God, whether you come at the normal time of worship, or you come at the time of training, or you come at the time of development, why you came is so that you will hear, you will understand, you will believe, you will consecrate yourself so that you will be obedient to the word of the Lord. It says, lest at any time we should let them sleep. He says in verse 2, in verse 2 he says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, the word spoken by angels, angels were said to Sodom, and the words they spoke became confirmed. Angels were sent to some of the prophets to the angel appeared unto Zechariah and said, this is what will happen in your family. And he said, how oh, can this be? Because I'm old. And he said, all right, I come from the very presence of the Lord. You will be dumb, not able to speak a word until everything is fulfilled. If the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. In verse 3 it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So great salvation, the salvation that Christ brought. And the word says, Every soul, everyone will see the salvation of the Lord. If we neglect that, if we neglect the repentance and the faith in Christ. If we neglect the word that this is the only Savior, there's no other name under heaven by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus. Believe then on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If we neglect that word of salvation, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. They heard him. They believed him. They understood him. They obeyed him. And now, Having heard, they pass it across to us. Having obeyed, they pass it across to us. Having given themselves, surrendered themselves fully to the word that Christ has spoken to them. Now they speak unto us. It says in verse 4, it says, 
God also bearing witness, bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with, the, with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. It tells us in John uh, chapter 8, reading from verse 24. John chapter 8, verse 24. I, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Those people were full of unbelief. They didn't accept everything. They said we believe in Moses, but they didn't believe the word that God has spoken unto Moses that this is the Christ, and this is Jesus, and this is the prophet that was to come. And Jesus said, if you remain in unbelief, if you remain in the rejection of who Christ is and what Christ will do, he says, if you reject that, ye shall die in your sins if you don't believe it tells us in that chapter 8 reading from verse 28 verse 28 says then said Jesus unto them when ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that I am he I am he the one proclaimed predicted prophesied that I will give you a prophet and it will be among your people like unto thee and I will put my word in his mouth and whosoever will not hear will not believe will not accept will not obey that prophet that I said he will be destroyed from among the people and then said Jesus unto them when ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that I am he and that I do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me I'll put my word in his mouth as my father has taught me I speak these six look at verse 29 in verse 29 and he that sent me is with me the father has not left me alone for I do always I teach always I say always I declare always those things that please him that Jesus Christ that's the one the father had sent look at chapter 12 of John reading from verse 49 John chapter 12 verse 49 for I have not spoken of myself this is the prophet capital P. This is that prophet. This is the revealed prophet that the word of God says he will come. The Father, God in heaven, will put his word in his mouth. And he said, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. Look at verse 50. In verse 50 it says, and I know that his commandment is life, a life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, whatsoever I speak, therefore, whatsoever I speak. Therefore, he said, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Whatever Christ has taught, whatever Christ has said, he said, it's as my Father gave unto me, so I speak. Can you recollect? Can you remember the words he spoke? He said, the Son of Man, it's come to call sinners to repentance. Have you been called to repentance? 
Have you responded to the word of repentance in the word of Christ, in the word of the Father? Everything he has said, and, and the Father is eternal. So Christ is eternal, and so his word is eternal. Everything he has said, everything he has emphasized, we're not just to hear, we're to submit, we're to surrender to the word he has spoken. One, in a personal lives, everything he said, the way to get to the kingdom of God, he has revealed that. He said that the narrow way, there is the broad way, there is the narrow path, and there is the broad road that leads into destruction. Many there be that go in their earth, and then there is the narrow gate and the narrow way, the road that leads to the kingdom of God. Few there be that find it. Are you listening to that word? Are you complying with that word? Are you obedient to that word? Are you submissive? to that word only the people that submit to that word those are the people that will get to the kingdom of heaven eventually we're looking at John chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 25 John chapter 4 verse 25 the woman says unto him I know that Messiah has cometh the Messiah that's another title for the prophet to come which shall which is called the Christ when he is come he will tell us all things all things personal all things devotional all things spiritual all things in our marriages, all things in our work, the work we should do for him, all things that will lead us to heaven eventually. I know the Messiah is coming. I know the promised prophet is coming. I know the revealed, predicted prophet is coming. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Look at the next verse, verse 26. And Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee, I am he. He himself confirmed, I am he. The Father confirmed, here is my beloved Son, in whom begotten Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And the apostles also said that the Father God he has raised up Jesus Christ and has sent him unto you to turn you away from your sin. There's confirmation from heaven. There's confirmation on earth. There's confirmation among the leaders in the church. Confirmation from every angle that Jesus is that prophet and he himself he confirmed he said i that speak unto you i am he and he told all those pharisees he says if you do not believe that i'm he you will perish you will die in your sins we'll come to point number two now point number two we're looking at the reigning prince with the foremost and the final majesty, the reigning prince. He is the one he reigns. He wants to reign now in every heart that believes on him so that there'll be no rival. Self will not be a rival to the savior. Society, the ideologies of the world will not be a rival unto of Jesus Christ in our heart. He wants to rule. He wants to reign in every heart. Why? Because he is the prince. He is the reigning prince with the foremost and the final majesty. Let's come back to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Reading from verse 18. I will raise them up. A prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, like unto thee, like unto thee. Now Moses was not just a prophet, like unto thee. He was a person that ruled, 
It was a person that gave commandments. It was a person that had the final say in the land of Israel. And I'm going to raise up a prophet like unto thee. He will have the final say. He will be a king. He will be a prince. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I shall command him. Moses already had spoken, and he said, That will not diminish a judge and urge from his word, neither will you add to his word. This prophet that God will send and will be like unto thee, he will not add. It will not subtract, it will not diminish from the world. And the people that follow this king, that follow this priest, they will not add, they will not subtract from the word of God. Verse 19, in verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Anyone that tries this up, that will not confirm and affirm the word of Christ the Prince, that fellow will be a false prophet, a false preacher, a false pastor, a false proclaimer. But we must identify with Christ if we belong to Christ every word he has spoken from the Father that we confirm and affirm the fact that he's a king look at some two I'm reading from verse 6 is some two we're looking at verse 6 yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion yes is prophet Yes, he is praise. And then he says in verse 7, in verse 7, I will declare the decree. He says, the Lord has said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Look at verse 8. He tells us in verse 8, ask of me. That's the father telling his son that God telling us, telling the prince, telling the king of kings and the lord of laws, ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, kiss the son. Believe the son embrace the son love the son submit surrender to the son lest he be angry and he perish from the way when his wrath indignation and anger anger against the sinners against the rebellious when his anger is bought a little kindle it says blessed are all they that put their trust in him in every word that the prophet christ has spoken in every command that the prince the king christ had decreed it says we should believe we should accept and if we do as we're obeying the king obeying the prince it says ours will be the blessedness of life eternal in isaiah chapter 9 reading from verse 6 it says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given the government the control the rulership the reign shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace the prince number one he brings peace in our hearts peace and because he is our peace it was sacrificed so that we can be reconciled with God. 
peace. Having been justified by faith, we have peace. Peace with God. It's also, it gives us peace also among those who have been contradicting each other. Among the Jews and the Gentiles, is brought peace because he has broken down the middle wall of partition. He is the one that brings peace between the opposing religions and the opposing tribes of the world. He is the one that will bring peace when he sets up his millennial reign. There will be peace everywhere and it will be journey peace that will be continuous all those 1,000 years. He is the prince of peace. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says of the increase of his government there shall and peace there shall be no end and it says upon the throne of David and upon the, his kingdom to order it and to establish it with just judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do it shall perform it and shall accomplish this in Jesus name we're looking now at um, Acts of the Apostles chapter 3 Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 22, again. Now this is the Christ, the Christ that brings peace, and the Christ that has the power to crush all things that are contrary to peace in every life, in our lives, in Jesus' name. Now, what we want to emphasize now is what God himself has said about him, that we will hear him. And whosoever will not hear him will be destroyed from among the people. Acts chapter 3 verse 22, it says, Moses truly said, certainly said, believingly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. It says, Him shall ye hear. Him shall ye hear. In all things, we're not to have another doctrine, another opinion, another idea a different message from what the king who decrees the king who emphasizes and the king that says this is the way what he therein because anyone that will not obey what he says will be brought into judgment he shall hear him in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you verse 23 in verse 23 and it shall come to pass that every soul every soul i'm sure you know here in the world here in the church for administrative purposes we have overseer we have coordinator we have sectional leader not in heaven in heaven every soul whosoever will not hear that prophet that prince that king whosoever a man a woman a man up there, a woman up there, a woman down here, a man down here, whosoever, every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. It will so reign because that's what the Father has ordained. And look at chapter 13 of Matthew. 
there were people they were so high in religion there were people they were so deep steeped in religion that they thought they had the liberty whether to obey or not to obey in matthew chapter 13 verse 13 it says therefore speak i unto them in parables because they seen see not and hearing the hear not neither do they understand look at verse 14 in verse 14 and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which says by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seen ye shall see and shall not perceive look at verse 15 in verse 15 for this people people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted. They were not converted because although they heard, they didn't understand. They didn't make any effort to understand. Although they saw, they did not perceive that this is he the only savior this is he the only propitiation for our sin this is he the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world they blocked their minds they closed their ears they blindfolded themselves and they were dull of hearing lest they should be converted and lest I should heal them. The Lord wants us to understand that Father has ordained him that he is the king, he is the prince and it is ours to say yes we believe on him. Look at John chapter 8, reading from verse 42. John chapter 8, verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself but he the father sent me the fulfillment of the prophecy that God himself had said that he will send him a prophet and then I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion and everyone is to wholeheartedly accept him wholeheartedly believe him, wholeheartedly surrender and submit unto him. But look at these ones, they will not accept and they will not believe. Then he told them, look at the next verse there in verse 43, why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word he spoke about holiness but their hearts were depraved and therefore they will not hear he spoke about a new life eternal life everlasting life but too much of the old life and because of the old life that they were clinging to the new life did not make any sense to them he cannot hear my word look at verse 44 in verse 44 he now told them this is uh, this is direct ye are of your father the devil and the laws of your father ye will do he was a murderer from 
the beginning and he was he, he abounded no he abode not in the truth because it says there is no truth no honesty no transparency in him when he speaketh therefore a lie he speaketh of his own because he is a liar and the father of lies and so he is told us in various ways in the one that came for the final message and he carries the final majesty and that word he wants reaching in every heart in John chapter 9 verse 27 John chapter 9 verse 27 here is the story of the man that was born blind and Jesus made clear and told him to go wash in the pool and he went and washed and came back seen and uh, the Pharisees uh, began to argue no he that's not the man it wasn't he said I am the man I was blind but now I can't see no we don't accept that they called the parents and they, and they said is this your child did you say he was born blind how then did his eyes open they said number one he is our child number two he was born blind give us number three number three we cannot tell how his eyes got open because they were afraid that if anybody confessed openly clearly boldly and confess without any shadow of doubt that this is he christ the prophet the prince he'll be thrown out of their synagogue because of that he said he is of age ask him and he will tell you himself and so now he answered them i have told you already and ye did not hear ye did not accept ye did not believe wherefore would ye hear each again look at the question will ye also be his disciple okay you want me to tell you again are you asking for this so that you will be his disciples look at the next verse the next verse says then they reviled him then they insulted him then they belittled him then they reviled him and said thou art his disciple but we are moses disciples our people say things they don't understand we are moses disciples no you are not if you were Moses' disciples, you would believe what Moses had written. And the prophets chorused that God will send a prophet, capital P, like unto me, will be chosen, will be among you. Him shall ye hear in all things that he will say, you blind man, your eyes are open. We cannot argue that. Okay, for you to follow him. You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. That's why the Lord said, when the final day comes and the judgment day comes, I will not condemn you. Moses, that you claim you believe, he will condemn you. Because you say, you are Moses' disciples, and yet, you will not give in to his word. I pray we will not be like them. Amen, Amen is wonderful. Amen. When we believe the word of the Lord, we'll accept Christ. We will bow down to Christ. We will submit to Christ. We will surrender to Christ, everyone. But if there's anyone that when we reach the words of Christ, because that contradicts its depravity. That contradicts its sinfulness. That contradicts its self-will. And it will not accept. It will be brought to judgment, to destruction on the final day. We're looking at Luke chapter 19. 
reading from verse 12. Luke chapter 19. We're reading from verse 12. This is talking about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ had said that therefore a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself the kingdom. The king went and he went to receive for himself the kingdom and to return. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, he called his ten servants and he delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. That the word of the king, that the word of the prince, that's the word of that revealed prophet. Occupy till I come. And if you don't obey that, you're one of the servants. It's giving us the gift. It's giving us the talent. It's giving us the commission. It's giving us the word to go and preach. And then you look at the faces of men. And because of fear, you say, I think I've done enough. I think I've said enough. And you do not occupy until he comes. You're not obeying the word of that prophet and the word of that prince. He wants us to occupy we remain occupied in Jesus' name. And when we're occupied, we're not going to preach the words of men. We're not going to preach the words that society wants. We're going to preach the word of repentance because he wants every soul to repent. God is not slack concerning his promise, but he's long suffering to us, what? not willing that anyone should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. He wants that to continue until he comes. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, but the citizens, his citizens, hated him and sent a messenger after him saying we will not have this man to reign over us that's why they rejected him pharisees sadducees that's why they said crucify him that's why pilate washed his hand i am innocent from the blood of this just man but was still guilty because he beat him with stripes and then handed him over unto the executioners that crucified him. And all the people that said, crucify him, let his blood be upon us. Those people were saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, he tells us, but those my enemies the people who do not want christ to reign in their hearts there's enemies the people who will not give the throne of their hearts to christ to reign to rule without a rival those are his enemies the people who were rather submit to sell than deny self and they say Self-denial is no more. All they want is self-indulgence. I'll do what I want to do anytime, anytime, every time, every time, everywhere, everywhere, any day, every day. Self is on the throne of their heart. And Jesus the King, Jesus the Prince, is not ruling in their hearts. They are the enemies of Christ. The people that reject the word of the Lord and they substitute their own opinion, their own ideas, and they say, well, he speaks, I speak. He wants, I desire. 
He says, this is the way. And I say, no, this is the way. All those people that contradict Christ, all the people that will not have the word and the will of Christ to reign in their hearts and in their lives, they are the enemies of Christ. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them thither and slay them before me. They will have part in a second death. They will have part in the suffering of the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. He wants to reign. That's his right. He wants to reign. That's what the Father has ordained. And if we're real disciples of Christ, we will surrender, we will submit, we will not be again, we will not have such a strong mind and such a strong will that will say no and say no and say no again unto Christ. He is the reigning prince and he wants to reign in every heart and all other ideas, all other opinions will submit, will be subdued, and be buried forever and ever in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the redeeming priest, the, for the, the faithful final mediator. The priest, the faithful final mediator. It tells us in Psalm is a sort for Samuel, for Samuel chapter 2, reading from verse 30. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, for Samuel chapter 2, reading from verse 35, and I will raise me up a faithful priest. The same way he said, I will raise up a prophet. The same way he said, I will set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. In the same way he says, I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in mine heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house a sure house, a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, the priest that will do what is in the might of the Father, and I'll be that priest forever and ever. In Psalm 110, reading from verse 4, Psalm 1, 110, reading from verse 4, it says, The Lord hath sworn and will not repent, will not relent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, Christ, Jesus Christ is that priest, the redeeming priest, and he comes as our faithful final mediator. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 17. Christ is the priest. He is the final priest who is priest after the order of Melchizedek forever. It says, wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, unto his brethren, that he might be the merciful and faithful high priest, Christ, the merciful and the faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. If they want to make reconciliation, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. He is prophet, he is prince, he is priest, and he is the one that has been ordained by the Father to make reconciliation for everyone. Look at chapter 3, chapter 3, 
verse 1. In chapter 3, verse 1, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He is the high priest of our confession, of our profession, and he is the one by his blood that satisfies everything the Father had ordained. And through his blood, all our sins are forgiven. He is the propitiation for our sin. And when we, confer, when we confess that, it's the one that confirms because he is our high priest. Look at uh, verse, look at uh, the next verse there. In the next verse it says, who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, for this man was counted worthy of more glory, more honor, than Moses, in as much, in so much, in as much as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, for even for every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. Verse 5. In verse 5, and Moses verily, truly, certainly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Verse 6, in verse 6, but Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of our hope firm unto the end. It confirms him, those verses confirm him that he is the priest, the high priest of our profession. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, verse 14. Chapter 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, that's the priest, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. A profession, I believe in Christ. Christ is my Savior. Christ is my Lord. What does that mean? My Lord, my controller, my Lord, my sovereign, my Lord, my ruler, my Lord, the one that reigns in my heart. When the temptation comes then to put your idea, your opinion, your will above that of the scriptures above that of the words of Christ. You say, no, I still hold fast to my profession that Christ is my Savior, my Lord, and I submit, I surrender all to him. Look at chapter 5 there. In chapter 5, we're looking um, at verse 4. Chapter 5, Verse 4, it says, And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, as he says also, 
in another place thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, and be made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them, not unto all them that pay lip service, unto all them who are doing their own will, unto all them who are self-centered, unto all them who exalt their opinion above the message of Christ, unto all them that obey him. The Lord gave us grace abundant to be obedient to this everlasting priest in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 6. We're looking at verse 18. In chapter 6, we're reading from verse 18 that by two immutable, immutable things in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who are fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that which was within the veil. Verse 20, in verse 20 it says, Whither the forerunner, that's Christ, is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Look at chapter 7, verse 25. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever needed to make intercession for them. Is a high priest, is now the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, and is making intercession for us. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, For such an high priest, that's Christ, become, became us who is holy, that's a high priest, harmless, that's a high priest on the fault and separate from sinners and made higher than the heaven and made higher than the heavens. It tells us in all these chapters and verses that Christ is that high priest and that high priest that has been sacrificed for us, he does something in, in our heart in our life. He purges, he purifies us. Actually, he perfects us. We're told in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, reading there from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 13, we're reading from verse 11. It tells us, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin a bunch without the calm. The high priest brings them and the body is burnt outside the camp. Then he tells us in verse 12, in verse 12, wherefore Jesus also is spoken about the high priest in verse 11. Now you see Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate. Verse 13 says, let us go forth therefore unto him outside the camp without the camp bearing his reproach. In verse 14 for here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. He is the priest. He is the prophet. He makes prophets of us. He is the priest. He makes princes of us. He is the high priest. And he makes priests out of us. In First Peter chapter 2, 
reading from verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 9. But she are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As the high priest, he has sacrificed for our sin. As the high priest, he has shed his blood for the cleansing of our soul. As the high priest, he has turned our lives and changed everything, making intercession for us that we will live the life of a changed, transformed person, having a new life and having eternal life. As the high priest he has now set the standard before us, how we live, because now we're chosen generation, we're royal priesthood, we're a holy nation, that we should show forth the righteousness, the praises, the glory, the honor of him who has called us. That's why he tells us in verse 21, First Peter chapter, chapter 2, verse 21, for even here unto were ye called, because Christ also has suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. It shows us the life we ought to live and now we follow his steps in verse 24 in verse 24 it says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. He has healed our soul. He has healed our heart. He has healed all the breaches uh, within us. He has healed the broken heart and he has healed the body by whose stripes ye were healed. We now come to him and we follow him. We accept him. We surrender to him as the revealed prophet. We surrender to him as the reigning prince. And we surrender to him as the redeeming priest. And that surrender will show in the new life that we now live every time, everywhere. And through us, he'll bring others into the kingdom as well in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and commit everything we have learned, everything we have heard unto him. We now know that Jesus Christ is the prophet. The prophet to come and he has come and he has sacrificed and he's coming again. Open your mouth and tell the Lord everything I have heard, I accept, I believe. I surrender to, I submit to the revealed prophet. And he has spoken the word of the Father unto us. And we need to hear that word, believe that word, submit to that word, observe and obey that word. If that revealed prophet has said, ye must be born again. Have you been born again? Have you been born of the Spirit? If that prophet had said, we'll bring forth the fruit of repentance. Have we obeyed the prophet? Don't be like the Pharisee that seared their hearts. He seared their consciences. They were there every time Christ, the revealed prophet, was speaking. They were there to judge. They were there to compare what Christ said with their tradition. And if what Christ said did not match, their tradition, they closed their minds. 
They stiffened their necks. They disobeyed. They perished. But Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hear his word. Believe his word. Accept his word. Drop your opinion. Bury your self will. Surrender to Christ. And every soul that shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Hakim, believe, obey. Accept the revelation that the Father had given about his son, the prophet. Let the revelation revolutionize your life. Don't just come and the people in Ezekiel's time, they hear, but they will not do. Until this day, they say, follow after their former manners. Understand? Believe, submit, and obey Him. Christ, the reigning Prince, don't compare His word with your opinion. Don't compete. But Christ, we will not be judged on the final day by your opinion. Your life, your lifestyle, your character, your conduct, will be evaluated by his word. The reigning prince, whosoever carried these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a man that built his house upon the rock and the winds blew and a storm came and that house stood steadfast because it was built upon the rock the rock of his word but whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not it's too full of self is too full of personal opinion. Is too full of depravity. Is too full of the world. 
He heareth these things of mine and doeth them not. I will liken him to the man that built a religious house. He might be fanatical, zealous, always running up and down, but he hears the word and he doeth them not, liken him to the foolish man. The built his house on the sand, the sand of shifting opinions of men, and the wind will blow vehemently, and the storm will beat upon that religious house, and it fell collapsed without remedy cannot be built up again and that man of his religious fanaticism perishes forever and ever but the words he spoke the eternal and every generation of those who believe him as the reigning prince will obey his word. Will not go astray into false doctrine. Not go astray into the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Where do you stand? Do you take his word as the word of the reigning prince? Or are you competing with the prince? Then you make yourself an antichrist. Let him reign. Reign in your heart. Reign in your family reign in his church. Let Christ reign in his church. Don't be a competitor with Christ in his own church. Let him reign. Bury your personal ideas, bury your personal opinions, Bury your self-will. Let Christ reign in his church. He is revealed to us as the redeeming priest. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And we know that he was manifested to take away our sin and in him is no sin he that abideth in him sinneth not whosoever is born again born of God does not commit sin for the seed of the Lord abides and remains in him he cannot sin he will not sin because he's born of God for we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not but whosoever is born of God keepeth himself that wicked one touches him not. His redemption sets us free. Free from sin. Free from sin. Free from satanic imposition. Prophet. 
prince, priest. Allow him to do his work, fulfill his ministry of prophet, prince, priest in your life and also in his church. Don't push Christ away. Don't replace him in his church with your depraved personality. Let Christ rule, reign over his own house. Father, we thank you tonight for what we have learned. We pray that this word will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Cleanse your people, wash your people, purify your people, and we pray that all things of self, all things of the flesh will be crucified and put to death in every life and in the church in Jesus' name. Amen. Be the prophet that speaks and your word will be final for us. Amen. Be the prince that decrees and your decree will be final for us. Amen. Be the priest that cleanses and your cleansing will be final in every life. Amen. Rule without a rival in your church. Amen. And we pray your reign in our heart, your reign in our families, your reign in your sanctuary in Jesus' name. Amen. And everywhere we go to the workplace, everywhere we go, anywhere outside the church and inside the church, We'll lift up Christ, we'll exalt Christ and allow him without any rivalry to be the revealed prophet, to be the reigning prince, and to be the redeeming priest every time, everywhere, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.